G-H-L-I-N, on Facebook, let him know you heard about him from the correct views. And then when you're done there, go to StickerJunkie.com. When you go to Sticker Junkie, let David Lake know that you heard about it on the correct views. Because what you're going to get, you're going to get amazing stickers that look like these. These are my band stickers, Passing Time. Um, YouTube.com slash uh, Sam for Passing Time. In, in the comment line, if you want some stickers, let me know. I'll make sure you get them there. Buck a piece. And they were made by Sticker Junkie, and they look absolutely amazing. And if you tell David Lake that you heard about Sticker Junkie on the correct views, you're going to get an amazing deal on it. Guys, I'm going to move on to real quick here because the show has already gone long. But you guys want real news. You don't want it all truncated. Uh, that's what I gave you today. So I, I really please share this video because, uh, God, I'm tired. I've been working my ass off today. But the news matters. The show matters. And I'm doing one. Uh, JerusalemPost.com. ISIS destroys ancient Christian cemeteries. Now, I know you've heard in many stories, D-Lake has commented on uh, what ISIS has done. We've covered a couple stories here on The Views. Now, they're going after the cemeteries of Christians. Let me ask you a question real quick. How many of you remember, I don't, I don't recall if it was World War I or World War II, I think it was two. But the, I believe it was French, but the, the, they were capturing, well not capturing, they were cleaning up the dead bodies. And if someone was Islamist, they would say, don't get captured by the French, or don't get captured by this or that. Because the, the blankets were made in part with pork skin. All these Islamists were up in arms. Oh, you disrespect the corpse by burying it with a pig. Never wrap it in pig. Never wrap it in pig. Well, you are destroying, and by that you I mean ISIS. ISIS is destroying the burial plots of Christians because we're supposed to have this magical reverence for Islam. The point is, we don't. We're not Islamists. We don't want to be Islamists because we know that Christ rose from the dead. And it can be proven um, without using the Bible. The, the issue here then is why is it that we are supposed to respect their religion when they don't respect anyone else's? Look what they do to the resting place of people. What kind of animals are these? It says that they consider praying or worshiping at grave sites to be idolatry. That's ridiculous. You're not, oftentimes, most times, you're not... You're either talking to the person who is deceased. And many times if someone is praying, they are praying to God uh, for a number of reasons. Maybe it's because they miss the person and it's destroying them. Maybe it's because the person died a horrible death and they wish to make sure that they are in heaven. And they are talking to God who they worship while at the grave site. They are not worshiping the dead person. This is more of the extreme lack of understanding and knowledge that is in your average barbarian Islamic State uh, supporter. They don't know anything but violence. They don't have a thinking part of their brain. Oh yeah, they could capture me and they could cut my head off. I understand this. The point is, I would still be right and they would still be wrong. Whether or not I had a head or not would be irrelevant. I'm still right. Um. They can't respect anyone that disagrees with them because they are very limited in what they know. Every time someone kneels, they must be praying. And if they're praying, then they must be worshiping their dead relative. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, that's because it doesn't make any sense. It says, the Islamic State released yet another set of images of militants desecrating Christian history, this time shattering ancient graves in Mosul. Well, that means that we need to start you know, making sure that they're properly buried in pig blankets. It says the images were released in a post on the official Islamic State media last week entitled Leveling Graves and Erasing Pagan Symbols. Well, then maybe we should desecrate the ISIS graves. What do you say? It says on April 16th, destruction of Christian graves in Mosul by Iraq by the Islamic State is part of the organization's ongoing campaign against Christianity in the Middle East and throughout the Muslim world. Uh, Steven Stalinsky, executive director of the Middle East Media Research Institute, known as Memory, uh, who flagged the photos, told Fox News, and he's right, says the images appeared on various jihadist websites before being obtained by Memory. 
Photos show militants using sledgehammers to destroy gravestones and removing any Christian imagery from the site. ISIS released a written justification for the destruction that was released along with photos, claiming that the Hadith, which nobody cares about, states that graves higher than ground level must be destroyed. Additionally, any image or inscription on such a grave must be erased. Well then, that's fine. I think we need to start burying uh, these idiotic ISIS members in pig blankets. And, you know, let's see, see how they like to have our interpretation of what's right and wrong at burial honor. It is important to note that ISIS is documenting its destruction and desecration of Christian sites and its attacks on Christian communities and other minorities, sites and communities, and is disseminating these images worldwide via social media. By doing this, ISIS is not only showcasing what it is doing, but it's also mocking the rest by demonstrating that it's doing so freely and no one is trying to stop it. This is why I say repeatedly that the most important thing that we can do as a nation is to, at the very least, I'm, I'm not talking about to solve the ISIS problem. I mean as a one-to-one -one person, as you, as me, as us. The most important thing you can do is to uh, keep a weapon with you at all times. I mean guns, yes, whenever possible. Always be prepared to defend yourself because... 99.99999% of you will never ever have to use that weapon. I have carried weapons my whole life and uh, never had to use them. A couple times I wish I'd have had one and didn't and I would have um, been jumped or whatever. The, the point here being be prepared because these people are barely even human. And again, th there, are, there are political solutions to this and we have, and the West has as a whole, done this horribly. Uh, for a very long time, and now, of course, it's, as Ron Paul said, a uh, blowback. And if you're going to go in, there's ways to do so better than what it is that we have seen from uh, Bush and Obama and the rest of them. Friends, this was interesting. The independent.co.uk, Italian police reveal what Jesus looked like as a young boy. Now, before I get into this, uh, Christelle didn't know what the Shroud of Turin was, so I'm going to let you know. Um, when they buried Christ, they uh, wrapped him in a shroud. And of course, after he was beaten and bloodied, etc., etc., th 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 for lack of better words, an image appeared on the shroud. So when he rose and took the, the, the grave clothes off, it left an impression. Some people have wondered whether or not this is Christ, or if it's not Christ, it's somebody else who was crucified and uh, buried in a very, very well-to-do grave site. Not that Christ was well-to-do, but uh, uh, the, the gentleman that gave him the grave site, Joseph of Arimathea, was very, very rich. And uh, maybe it was somebody that had some money and was crucified and wasn't Jesus. Well, it seems to me that it would be very easy to find out if this was Jesus or not. And I will tell you why. And this has driven me nuts for years and years and years. For as long as I've known about the shroud, which is pretty much since it was found. Um, Christ was born of a woman, but Joseph was not his father. Therefore, this was a divine birth. And if you test the DNA, if this DNA is radically different from any other form of human DNA that we have ever seen, then we know that the Shroud of Turin is real. If it's everyday normal DNA, then that might be an indication that it isn't Jesus. Why has there not been a DNA test done on the blood that's in the Shroud? We, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can get DNA from some dinosaur bones. You mean to tell me we cannot get any DNA on this blood? Because I'm telling you, if it's Christ, the DNA will be radically different due to the fact that he's the only miracle birth in the history of the world. It said, detectives claim to have revealed how Jesus looked as a child based on computer forensics from the world's most famous relic, again, the Shroud of Turin. They used that, and which was, again, the supposed burial cloth of Jesus. Police investigators have generated a photo fit image from the negative facial image on the material. And from this, they reverse the aging process to create an image of a young Jesus by reducing the size of the jaw, raising the chin, and straightening the nose, which again was very likely uh, broken 
Uh, they didn't break any of Christ's bone, but as you all know, the nose is not bone, it's cartilage. The technique effectively reverses the method that Italian police use to generate current likenesses of criminals, including senior mob bosses for whom new photo fit images are needed when they have been on the run for decades. Uh, and again, you can go to the site, they use the Shroud of Turin to let you know what Christ looked like. I wanted to actually put the the image on the screen and uh, thank you Angela I donated to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com just like you can do every penny you give me goes towards a better show I have this TV behind me and the TV doesn't work so there is still enough money from donations for me to have to get a new TV I was putting this off because I wanted you guys to see it but in any event go to independent.co.uk Italian police reveal what Christ looked like it's very, very interesting. And then again, ask yourself why they haven't tested this shroud. And uh, again, the DNA would prove one way or the other. Definitively, I would, uh, I would think. And friends, that brings us to the dum -dee of the day. Oh, yes. Wait. The dum -dee Wait. of the day. Yes, the, Christelle. The Hillary Clinton story. We're gonna have two dumdies. You see, Christelle, a little bit, of, a little bit off-camera news here. Christelle wants this to get. As I was getting ready for the show, hat tip, literal. Hey, when's the last time it was a real hat when someone said it? Hat tip, Mark Dice. As we listen to more dumdy music here, um, he covered a story on how Snoop Dogg is voting for Hillary Clinton largely because she is female. And then Mark Dice mentioned that he thinks it's going to be mentioned in the future that if you don't support Hillary Clinton in her run to the White House, that you are not supporting her because she is female. And that has struck a particular nerve with Christelle. Christelle, you are supporting Hillary Clinton, right? Uh, no. You're not? No. Do you hate women? That is one of the stupidest questions I have ever heard. No, I am female, so no, I do not it's, hate women. Sometimes, you know, she might like women a little too much. Let me ask you another That's question. That's a different story for a different day. <laughs> That wouldn't be a dumdy. Uh, the other thing, friends, uh, let me mention this. Uh, you are, in fact, female, right? Yes. All right. It, Last time, wait, let me check. Could, could, you, oh. could you prove that on camera for us? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, no, uh, she, no, no, she's gone away. All right, but friends, <laughs> yeah, that, that's right up there with the dumdies. So do you see that coming as well, Christelle, that they're going to go ahead and say that if you don't support Hillary Clinton, then you are, in fact, sexist? I could see it. I could see Hillary pushing for that Well, as then, well. J just for Snoop and those who may think this way, one more time. And that, friends, that does bring us in uh, to, I guess, what is now our second dumb D. We have dumb Ds of the day. PrisonPlanet.com. Students discover ginormous bugs in the Michelle Obama lunch. Now, I'm not necessarily blaming the big O for this one here because, in her defense, it wasn't like she served it, but she's the one who has schools importing these foods where otherwise they weren't necessarily getting the same foods in the same orders. So sometimes you have to settle for subpar food just because it's all you can order in order to be able to meet the lunch requirement. And if you don't, you lose your uh, federal funding. Well, the dumb of the day is going to Caney Creek High School. And I'll tell you why in a minute. It's for their lunch staff. Conroe, Texas. Parents no, it can be difficult to get their kids to eat their greens. But after an incident at a Texas high school, some students may never eat vegetables again. It says there's no way they could have missed them. Picking up a handful of broccoli like they do with their gloves and have not seen these ginormous bugs, Melissa Evans so eloquently said. She's the mother of Caney Creek Middle School junior Phelan Evans. And uh, she told it to click to Houston. Now, friends. How in seven hells did the lunchroom staff at Caney Creek High School not notice that the broccoli that they were serving to the kids was covered in bugs? And again, I wish this damn screen was up because it's very, very obvious. It says Fane Evans and her friend were served bug-infested broccoli. Now, it looks like one or two bugs 
for lunch Monday, and the two almost ate the insects before they realized what they were. Or at least somebody was eating the Big O's lunch. Most of them don't. Says it was kind of strange and gross that we had actually seen it and that it happened to us, she said. KFOR reports school officials acknowledged the problem in an email to parents that provided very few details. Officials were notified this morning of complaints regarding food in the cafeteria, according to the statement Monday. Any concerns are taken seriously, and Camaro, that's the Independent School District's Child Nutrition Department, is addressing the problem. The problem isn't necessarily the food. Okay, I understand that things happen. I used to work in a restaurant. I can say it now. They're not around anymore. The Pizza Palace. They sent us, and we made great food. They sent us chicken wings that still had feathers in them. And it was noticed when you put the wings in, the feathers rose to the top. You couldn't miss it. But guess what? We fixed it. How do you not notice that the broccoli that you're cooking is covered in insects? <sighs> food inspectors went through the cafeteria of food Tuesday and discovered more bugs. The district contends they are aphids. It's a batch in a batch of frozen broccoli and believe that the infestation was limited to just the one batch, which somehow the people cooking the food couldn't see, even though the broccoli is green and the bugs are black. They were not chameleon-like. It says, regardless, Melissa Evans said she's not taking any chances and will pack her daughter's lunch for the rest of the school year. She will be taking lunches, Evan told Click2 Houston. She will not be eating it anymore at all. That means that Phil Evans will join more than one million students who have opted out of the National School Lunch Program since the new federal guidelines on nutrition went into effect in 2012. And it says the Fed lunch restrictions set limits on calories, fat, sugar, sodium, whole grains, and other aspects of school food, including food sold outside the cafeteria. Well, they're definitely getting some extra protein. And you got to remember, we were talking about Jesus a minute ago. John the Baptist lived off of locust and wild honey. I'm just saying. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for the Media Speaks, signing off. Do me a favor. If you're anywhere even remotely close to Canton, Ohio, and you're going to catch a cab anywhere, go to um, a Change Taxi. You can find them on Facebook.com and price match it. Before you get in any other taxi, go to Change Taxi and have uh, Kenny price match it. Make sure you say you heard about it from The Correct Views. That will help me immensely. And uh, thank you for listening, friends. This show has gone on for 56 minutes. I am exhausted. Good night, friends. God bless.